Good afternoon, welcome to the Veloads YouTube channel. We are in the beautiful Crystal Palace Park this morning. Today, we're going to cover speed. This, this vlog is all about speed and how fast a human can go in a human powered vehicle. And do we have a human powered vehicle for you ladies and gentlemen today? Neil Hood in the Ristretto Speed Bike. There we go. And would you look at that? Morning, John. Morning, Neil. Carbon fibre body with steel um, struts carbon fibred into the bodywork. It has a spine of metal right down the middle of the bike, but low mm -hmm. down. And there's no seat in it because they can't have a seat in it. So I literally lay in the body. Yep. Uh, it's front wheel drive. The whole mechanism is just four bolts. You can lift the whole lot out literally in 10 minutes. I can lift all the running gear out completely. Uh, the wheel at the back, um, no brake, yep. and just a, a open bearing, so it rolls very, very well. And as you can see, I don't know if you see on the camera, there's very little tyre sticking out at the bottom. So, you can just about that, see that, the tyre. That tyre there, there's, a, there's literally about 15 mil tyres sticking out at the bottom. So you, you know, yeah, you can't even see it. The thing is, with um, with um, wheels and things, you don't really want to have them out in the air, so there's just a lot less drag. It's tiny. That's what strikes you the yeah. most is the size yeah, of the if, thing. Yeah, when you when you look at Ristretto head-on, it has a very very low CDA because it is tiny. Yeah. Do you think this is a, a good place to have a look inside? Yeah, yeah, we can do. I can take the top or, off. Awkward on my own. There you go. Right. So basically, it's quite simple. It's a step-up gearing. So this is like this is like four times step-up gearing mm -hmm. ratio. So it's a 65. How does that work? That's so basically because uh, we're on here. It's on the big gear at the moment. Let me just pull it forward slightly. So yeah, it's on the big gear. So it's going to want to. Uh, So when you say step up gearing. So what happens is, so basically, for every one turn here, mm -hmm. obviously it's turning a much bigger cog here. So it, it, it times it, it times the gearing up. Mm -hmm. So I can't I can't really have a humongous chain ring at the front. So the only other way to do it is to have step up gearing. Okay. So there's two there's two ways of doing it. Have like I say, but in the, in Ristretto design, it doesn't favour well for having a huge chain ring right in front of you there. Okay. Because it's not a camber bike. It's um, you look out the screen. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, it's like nine, is it? So yeah. It's nine speed? Yeah, nine speed, yeah. Yeah, nine speed. Nine speed in there. Yeah. The only thing I am, uh, for me to go to Battle Mountain though, I am thinking about putting disc brakes on it because the speeds that you go down at Battle Mountain are so high. For the hour record, a standard brake's fine, but for Battle Mountain, it needs to have better braking. So you have to come into a catch area to yeah. be caught. Um, so this end. It has, wow, what yeah, um, compared to most bikes, between Streamliner, this is actually quite a lot of lock, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. Some of the Streamliner bikes only have half what I've got. So, but that's not good for top speed. It's okay for the hour because you've got the control and you don't need, you know, but um, for, for top speed, we'll probably put some sort of apron around there just to aid even more speed. Good idea, yeah. And it, and it does have a shroud and everything that goes all over all this, covers it all in that's to... A, okay. Keep you off the running gear. Well, to keep you off the running gear, but also by having the wheel covered inside the body, mm. and they've proven that it gives you more speed. That fork, beautiful workmanship. Yeah, and there's the uh, metal spine. Let's have a look. It's just a, just a metal spine that just goes down the bike, and it just gives it the strength. So basically, you've got the frame, which you just undo the bolts here and two at the front. Yeah. They can lift the whole lot out, which is really good for maintenance, and then just a, then the the power the weights in transferred away down through here the strength to the back wheel and the headless lays on that so it literally it's no cushions for and that your body just fits in the mold perfectly and there and there's a bit of a story just behind this here originally the body came in mm -hmm. but after a bit of wind tunnel testing they found that the air was um coming off the bike not very nice so they filled it in and done a much nicer smoother line so now it actually actually goes better than the original design when Francesco did it mm -hmm. and he realized that he was losing a bit of speed because of this 
So this was added later. Wow. Ventilation tube here, grip shift, one brake lever on the front. It's really raining. <laughs> yeah, the, air, the air comes in so it clears the windscreen and I get air to my face as well. Wow. Brilliant. It's full of everything. Yeah. It's a well it's a well thought out and tested bike, so it just made my life a bit easier. That's the main reason why I bought it, because it just means I didn't have to go down the road of testing and building and spending a lot of time trying to get perfect a bike. Yeah. It was now jumped inside so you can have a an idea of what it's like when you're in. Obviously you wouldn't be wearing all this clothing. But obviously when I'm in it I have to pull my elbows in yep. and my shoulders get hunched up onto the bodywork and that's how tight I am. So when I'm pedalling, my knees literally go into the body and I actually have to look through here to see out. Jeez. So my head just rests on the on little, that. little cushion. Like that. And I push the handlebars up slightly and I look through here. Amazing. So there's the view that I have. For me, I, I only just fit in it, so I'm, I'm the maximum size body to come inside in it. How tall are you? Uh, 185. So literally when I'm inside it, my head's actually touching the bodywork completely. My knees touch the body and my, my toes touch the screen. Um, Oliver set a national record in it after Francesco set his record in it. Uh, uh, who's uh, Francesco? Uh, Francesco designed the bike. Francesco, Francesco Rosso. Okay. And, uh, yeah, from Switzerland, he set the Swiss record in it, and I think he went 85 kilometers an hour in it. And then uh, he uh, sold it to Oliver, and Oliver then set his national record in it. And then uh, that's when I, I got it. How fast do you think this machine can actually go? Ah, well, um, the fastest I've been in it is 64 miles an hour, Oof. which is 110 kilometers an hour. Uh, and how did it feel at that speed? Was... Absolutely. The faster you go, the more stable it feels. Yeah, okay. low speeds. I mean, it's, it, out of all the streamliners, it's, it does actually handle very well. Mm -hmm. It's very good in crosswinds. It's not slab sided. It's actually quite a nice round shape. That's not particularly. Good. Yeah, that doesn't mean to say it's the fastest shape, but it's certainly a very good shape. Yeah. Uh, but it's very stable, very easy to ride. But the faster you go, the more comfortable you feel because it, you feel like you, you're less likely to tip over. Yeah. Okay. You know? And uh, yeah, it's, it handles a dream. It really, it really does. It's a great bike. Brilliant. Um, I got the bike. Went out to Decra. Uh, literally, only had the bike for a couple of months and tried to do the record, but we had a few technical issues. So I didn't really have a much sort of um, knowledge then of the bike and uh, and also I wasn't very fit really at the time, I was, I was about 85 kilos um, my FTP wasn't particularly very high at the time uh, but the bike performed fantastic, the first couple of laps going around deck where I was going around near on 50 miles an hour on 230 watts now I'm a much stronger rider now and uh, really looking forward to actually having a crack at the record this year and uh, doing it, I'm, I'm 50 this year so it's sort of like 50 at 50, I want to go 50 miles in one hour and try wow. to get the British record. Weight wise, uh, what are we looking at for this uh, beautiful machine? Uh, with, with, the, with the steel boom in there, it's 25 kilos. Mm -hmm. um, I do have an aluminium uh, boom for it as well, which was the original one. But uh, when, when Oliver got it, he changed it to the steel one, but I've now had a carbon fibre one boom made. And not just, not just because of weight, because we're lowering all the gears on the top so I can see out a little bit better. Because it's hard to explain, but when you're in the bike, as you're pedalling, your knees and your legs get in the way of your view. So literally every pedal, oh, so you're only ever seeing half the track every, as you ride around. And you can only see 50 metres down the track. So, <laughs> yeah, but when, you, when you're travelling along at high yeah. speed, it's not really an issue and you follow the line. Mm -hmm. But um, definitely not a bike for a twisty racer. Or pootling around town. <laughs> no, you wouldn't poot around town in it. No, no. no. Okay. Just, uh, just to find out a little bit about the training regime that you implement for this world record attempt, because it's for the hour record, isn't it? Yeah, for the hour record. It's for the hour. Um, and what's the, um, what's the record at the moment? Do you know it off yeah, by heart? Uh, I don't know exactly what it is. It's Rob English. He just okay. went just over 50 miles in one hour. Wow. 
just okay. just over 50, 50.0164, I think it is. Okay, lovely. Um, but then I met up with Ken Buckley, who is the British land speed record holder mm -hmm. uh, at Reading Track, because he needed to try a bike. And, yeah. uh, and obviously there's not many streamliners in England, so they got in contact with me, the Liverpool team did. Ken is a coach as well as a cyclist and and, uh, and uh, so I just got uh, sort of talking to him and told him what I was doing and I just sort of thought it'd be good to join forces with him and actually have him coach me because if anybody knows it would have been Ken because obviously not many people do this sort of racing mm -hmm. so Ken was the ideal person for, for my coach really. And what's the name of his company? Has he got uh, a name for yeah, it? Ken Buckley Performance. Okay, yeah. we'll leave a link in the description so if anyone else is thinking of a, becoming a tip-top athlete. Yeah, he's fantastic, yeah, you, yeah. you feel really sort of, he really does look at the data and keeps in touch with you and let you know how you're doing mm -hmm. and analyses it and adjusts things as you go along. So it's, it's for me it's perfect knowing that there's someone, mm -hmm. it's, it's one thing I have to don't worry about. Yeah. I just do the training, Ken yeah. looks at the numbers. And, uh, and, and you've uh, been increasing. Yeah, increasing it all along. Yeah, you know, power's gone, going up. Absolutely, and... absolutely. Uh, I've gone from I wasn't very fit at all when I first started, uh, up to I was one seven five FTP, which is really low. But I was really out of shape and ridden for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. To now yep. sort of nudging two eight five, and going up all the time. Wow. You know, I mean, if I'm hoping for three hundred at the start of the season, really. You're 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 going to try and um, attack Battle Mountain in Nevada. Yeah, I mean the thing is, I really I, the hour record is my ultimate, is my real big goal. Mm -hmm. But um, I've always wanted to go out to Battle Mountain just to see, and I think lots of other, other people out there want to see Ristretto out there just to see what you can do for top Battle speed. Mountain is where they do the top speed run. top speed run. Yeah, I mean in yeah, similar bikes. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So it's where you go for the fastest top speed. Okay, and that's in Nevada, in America. In Nevada, yes, a place called Battle Mountain. And I think yeah. a German guy holds the record at the moment. Uh, no, it's t uh, Todd. Todd um, holds a uh, the record at 89 miles an hour. Oh. This is really flying something. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. uh, hard to fathom. Yeah, yeah, and Ken Ken's got the British record at 75 miles an hour. Okay, I think so Ristretto would get pretty close to that. I think it'd get quite what? close. I think it's definitely a possibility. It's, it's an unknown thing because I've never really had a place where I can really open it up. Yeah, yeah. Obviously at, at Decra, I was just going for the hour record, mm. so I wasn't going at top speed pace. And so the, the, the thing is, um, to get to Nevada, in the desert it's there. It's so expensive. It's I mean, expensive, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been, I'm doing the British Hour record off my own back, but really, for me to get out to America, I really do need some sort of sponsorship okay. and some help because it takes a, a team of about at least three, three or four people because you have to have a driver, you have to have a catch team, a you have car. to have a launch team. So yeah, it takes quite a few people, and obviously just the physicalities of getting the bike over to Nevada is, yeah. is, isn't cheap. Like You've got to that. hire a car when you're there to follow vehicle, the bike absolutely. every run. Yeah, every run someone has to follow you behind you just to make sure you're yeah. okay. Flights and, so and was, accommodation, it all adds up. Yeah, it all adds up and then that's sort of out of my, sort of out of my, I can't really afford to do that. Mm -hmm. but I'm hoping to sort of get some sponsorship. The bike is, you know, is really well known and it is a fantastic vehicle for sponsorship. So it'd be great to get something. So if there are any companies out there who like the look of Ristretto and would like their logo or company brand emblazoned all over it on this uh, world record run in Nevada or even on the hour record, get in touch. You can always email us at um, Velo Ads or send us a message on YouTube or Instagram and um, we'll leave uh, Neil's email in the description as well. So yeah, get in touch and if you fancy sponsoring that, that bullet, here's the place to hit us yeah. up. Excellent. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, is Velo Ads over and out.